Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to give you a little bit of a crash course to the standard template library. Now, I've been talking about the standard template library for quite a bit, but I want to go ahead and just give you a brief introduction to maybe sort of the philosophy, some of the origin of the standard template library, because we're going to start talking about some of the data structures later on in this series. And I just want to have a sort of gentle introduction to it. So with that said, let's give you some of the history and where you can learn more about the standard template library. Start starting now. So again, you have been seeing on this channel, or if you've been watching these videos, the standard template library, it's all over CPP reference. You can just go to the front page, do control F, and you'll see library here. And these are all of the various uh, functions, algorithms, data structures, or containers that are available to us in C++. So you can see that C++ comes with quite a bit of different tools, which makes it quite convenient to work with. I like to call it the batteries included language, as I tell folks when you work with C++, because you have all these things built in, which is quite nice. So again, I'll just move out of the way so you can see that link here. If you, again, you are not familiar, CPP reference is our main sort of source of information here. Now, sometimes I do point beginners to c++.com because you might also find nice resources there uh, as far as some of the examples. But in general, I recommend highly CPP reference. That's where most of the up to date information is kept. Um, but of course, you'll find uh, lots of useful information on various blogs and stuff. Uh, but again, here's sort of the definitive reference of when the feature was implemented, uh, when it's available and what's sort of to come in the future. So just a little bit of history on the standard template library. Uh, and again, this is implying that it's templated, meaning that you can reuse these containers or algorithms on different sorts of data types. Um, again, that's the purpose for it to be general purpose and generally a good first tool for most folks to use for most tasks. You know, that's not to say that's perfect or for every domain, but again, pretty good to use. Um, and pretty well tested because, well, there's uh, millions of C++ developers out there using this sorts of stuff. So just a little bit on the history of the origin. Uh, I'll go ahead and move out of the way here so you can see. But it would be about 1993 or so where Alexander Stepanov uh, presented this generic library to the C++ committee. And basically, it was a proposal looking somewhat similar to what you'd see in C++ 98 or something uh, similar to you have now with just, you know, fewer data structures or containers. But uh, basically, the first proposal where there would be a collection of data structures or containers and algorithms available to developers to use. And it was really quite cleverly devised. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But basically, this idea that you had a standard library of algorithms, containers, functions, and iterators available for developers. So regardless of the platform or the compiler that'd be used, you would have some guarantee that you would have something that we all like using, like vector available on most vendors. And in fact, most of the compilers like Clang, G++, Microsoft, um, NVIDIA, and so on have standard libraries that are available um, and that we can uh, take advantage of. So with that in mind here, let me go ahead and show you the uh, different uh, implementations available if you go on the uh, Wikipedia page for C++ standard library. Again, you can see GNU, LLVM, NVIDIA, Microsoft, some other ones. Um, you've even got some domain specific standard libraries like Electronic Arts um, standard library, for instance, which is you know data, a collection of data structures and so on for games. Um, and of course, there are many more, many more companies have their own standard libraries. But again, having one, a lib uh, C++ or lib standard C++ library available is useful. Now, let's go ahead for a moment, though, and just look at CPP reference here. Because again, I see all these different libraries here. And really the important part here that I want you to know as far as the philosophy is that there's containers, there's uh, iterators here, if I highlight, and then there's algorithms, okay? Now let's go ahead and just talk about these three pieces for a moment here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and just keep them all here uh, on the same page. And basically, how do these three things play together? Well, again, uh, we have our containers, which are our data structures, okay? Uh, that's how most folks think of them. 
And again, we probably could have called uh, containers data structures <laughs> in the standard library. Uh, but that's, again, a, uh, and again, the way to think of them is a collection of elements. Okay. I'll put them in the brackets just so you can see that, well, I mean, this is uh, templated, right? We can have an element can be anything, strings, integers, floats, user-defined types, and so on. Okay. Uh, so that's one part of it. And the next part is algorithms. And algorithms are, well, operations on elements. Okay. So we have some collection here, whether it's an array based or maybe a linked based uh, data structure. But regardless of that, the algorithm can process the data no matter what the input is. Okay. It just needs to be able to look at or look into the actual container. Now, how it looks into the container, well, that's the key part for iterators. Okay. And iterators really are an abstraction in my sort of mind over pointers uh, in, um, I should just say an abstraction. Let me simplify this a little bit for accessing our containers in a sequential or random access manner. Okay, now that's a little bit technical speak here. Um, but you know, this idea that we have an abstraction so that we don't have to work necessarily with raw pointers, that we're accessing our containers and you know we can do things sequentially or we could have random access iterators or iterators that work in reverse or bi-directional the point is that you have different ways to maneuver uh so i'll say different ways to maneuver through containers Okay, and really iterators are sort of the bridge here where I've got my container. I'm just going to sort of generically make it an array based thing. Then I've got my iterator here, okay, which is telling me how do I access one of these elements here, maybe sequentially, one at a time here. And how I'm sort of uh, iterating through, though, is with the algorithm okay so this is sort of the algo okay i'll just go ahead and write it there um and, and that's the sort of idea right and the algorithm is sort of the you know steps for how i'm doing things one two etc um you know so that's the idea so the iterator is sort of the the bridge into our uh, actual container Okay, it's saying, hey, how do we get access? And then the algorithm tells us how to uh, maneuver through each of these pieces of data or how to hop around through the data or whatever. And it's important to understand that, you know, and the reason I'm sort of drawing it this way here is that the algorithms and containers are separated, right? They're separated abstractions. That way, if you write your own container, you can take advantage of the algorithms that are implemented. So that's really kind of one of the powerful ideas of the standard template library, right? You can use algorithms with your own data structure. You can write your own algorithms that work with containers. And you can write, of course, your own uh, iterators here in the middle, which tell us how to access things. Now, I suppose the last thing that I'll say about uh, iterators and what makes them interesting and we will study them a little bit more in this series or my software design series is that a pair of iterators and I'm running out of room here. So I'm just going to extend this a little bit here and just say a pair of iterators makes a range. Okay. And a range is, you know, where your computation is. So typically you have a uh, start here and you might again have some data and you have your uh, ending here. So I'm just going to label this start and your end. 
Now, typically your end might be at the end of the data, but again, what I'm saying with your range is the pair of these just tells you from start to finish what's your range of computation that you're working on. Okay, so those are some of the big ideas with the standard template library ranges that are come from iterators, algorithms, and containers. And if you kind of come into that mindset um, while using the standard template library, I think that's a little bit useful. It gives you a little bit of a model for how to compute and take advantage and maybe even understand a little bit some of the design and the design uh, constraints with C here. So, again, if we just go ahead and take a little look at this here. And let's actually look for that uh, last one here, uh, ranges. And you can see that this is a, one of the newer things here that we're going to want to get into. Um, that, again, is basically a nice way to uh, work with a pair of uh, iterators. All right, so with that said, I hope that gives folks a little bit of an introduction to the standard template library. We're going to go ahead and talk more about some of the specifics, looking at some of the data structures, some of the containers, and so on as we proceed in this series. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. And make sure you comment below if there's specific things that you'd like to know about, uh, or otherwise engage in the uh, discussion as needed. So with that said, folks, thank you for your time, and I'll definitely look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.